Hello boys and girls, today I want to compare snare drum betterheads. I want to find out which one I should use for a fat and punchy rock or metal snare drum sound. And as usual on this channel, if we do tests like this, we do them properly, right? Very German. Let's do the test as German as possible. <laughs> and let's have a lot of fun, which is not very German. <laughs> So let's make the bing bing and the bong bong sound great again. Let me show you our setup. We are using a 14 by six and a half pearl aluminum snare drum. It's just one of the snare drums I use a lot. It sounds great. Um, I think it's called Pearl Sensitone Elite, if I'm not mistaken. 14 by six and a half, standard size for rock and metal and great sounding. So I wanna use three different heads today. We start with an ambassador, then we use something middle of the road, and then we use something very thick and very dampened. So uh, we cover the whole range of possible options. And each of those three heads will be tuned to exactly 260 Hertz. So 260 Hertz, before you ask, because I know you will ask, this is the frequency of the better head, not the frequency of the entire shell. So we tuned all three heads exactly to 260 by using a tune bot. And the resonant head is tuned to around, what was it, 315, 320 hertz. So a lot higher. That's how I typically tune my snares. The rest of the signal chain stays the same, of course. All the other microphones stay the same. The snare drum mic stays the same. Even the position stays the same. So the only thing that changes is the head itself. And of course, the performance. Because, you know, the guy has to play again. By the way, this is Thomas playing today, um, a local drummer from a vintage rock band called White. I'll put a link there, check out his band, they're cool. Why 260 hertz? Well, it's some kind of middle of the road tuning. You know, it's too low for a death metal drummer who needs a lot of rebound, but it's too high for a very modern, boom, very beefy metal snare. But it's, it's somewhere in the middle, it's a good compromise, and I think the differences we will hear between the different heads, they will be the same no matter if I tune a little higher or a little lower. So let's quickly talk about the microphones used. The main microphone is from SE Electronics. It's the V7X that I use a lot on snare. It sounds great. Then we have, oh, I think we're just using, we're mainly using SE Electronic mics today. This is not a sponsored video by SE Electronics, by no means. So, but I'm using the SE Electronics Rupert Neve, I think they're called RN17 pencil condensers as overheads today. And I'm using the SE Electronics X1R ribbons as room mics. By the way, in the upcoming affordable drum mics video I'm working on, you can win a pair of those microphones. So. You better subscribe to this channel. Uh, so it's basically six microphones that are responsible for our snare tone. Then we have a Beta, Shure Beta 52 and the kick. And I've forgotten what I use on the toms. Audix or SE Electronics, doesn't really matter. We are talking about snares today. Let's talk about the drum heads. So what do the companies want us to buy if we are a rock or a metal drummer? What do Remo and Evans, what, what do they want to sell us? Well, they tell us what we need is a very thick, double-ply, uh, very dampened snare drum head uh, that makes our snare tone very controlled, dark, fat, and short. That's what they want to sell us. Sounds good, right? But, you know, I'm always a little suspicious because 
You remember what I told you about crash cymbals? If you are a rock or metal drummer, uh, don't buy any crash cymbal that is called rock or metal. <laughs> Ironically, don't do that. <laughs> They're not gonna work. Um, so we gotta see if that's really the way to go. Let's just see what we got here. I told you we've got three different heads and we're gonna start with a real classic, the Remo Ambassador, which is a one ply head and it's very thin. It's a classic and um, yeah, what, they, what they say is it, it has a lot of sustain, it has a lot of higher frequencies and um, it's very responsive. That's what they say. So the next thing we're gonna use is this Evans Heavyweight. So this is already a double ply. That means two ambassadors. And additionally, we have this reinforcement thingy here that makes it more durable. Is that the word? Yeah. Um, so this is way thicker and supposed to sound darker, shorter, more controlled, have less highs and more lows. And then we go for the very extreme. So here we got an Evans hydraulic or a hydraulic, hydro, how, do you, how, do you, how do you call this? Hydraulic, maybe. This one looks really cool. So this is the thickest head I've ever seen. You know, it's two ply and then there's some oil, you know, oil between those plies. So this is indestructible. So the ambassador really feels like paper in comparison. So these are the three heads we're using today. They will all be tuned to 260. Let's just see what happens. We start with the Ambassador because it's the standard and everybody has used it. It's not dampened at all. We're not using any any, any moon jails or any other tools. Uh, dear Thomas, play something. Show us the Ambassador. The Ambassador, it sounds really ringy. It sounds really ringy. It has a nice attack. It has a lot of high frequencies, if you ask me. It has a lot of character. I, ca I kind of like it. It doesn't sound very heavy metal, but yeah, it has a lot of character. One thing you need to understand that is very important is that a lot of the snare ring that you hear right now will be eaten up later, will disappear in a dense metal mix. So I always try to have a little more of it then not enough of it. So what sounds a little extreme now might be just the right thing later. Anyway, Ambassador, bright, a lot of sustain, ringy, and a lot of character. Not the fattest, but interesting sounding. So let's move on with the heavyweight better head from Evans. Okay, this already sounds a little different. First of all, what I notice is this sounds like it's tuned a lot lower. And this is something I noticed with all the different heads. I think it's the overtones fooling our ears, but if you all tune them to 260, they all sound like they have a different tuning. Um, it sounds a little less ringy. The ring sounds just different. It sounds a little more punchy, but overall, I think not too different from the Ambassador. It's a little more controlled and kind of what I expected. So let's move on to the Black Beast here, this one, and see what happens. Thomas.
Okay, and this is totally what I expected, right? This sounds really, really different. Let me analyze this. First of all, it sounds even lower, even deeper, the tuning, you know. Then it's really short and really controlled. It almost sounds like a sample. It sounds very production ready in a way because every hit sounds like the other. If we remember that ambassador sound, um, that sounded more dynamic. You could hear more dynamics between the single hits and you could hear more difference between the single hits depending on where he hits the snare. Ding, dang, doom, you know, like that. So let's just go back to the ambassador, have another listen. And now back to the hydraulic. More low end, more punch, a lot darker, a lot more controlled, but also a little more boring, if you ask me. A little more boring. So, I don't know, right now it might sound a little better because it's more controlled and it sounds closer to a final production, but yeah, once you add the guitars, it might sound a little boring. Just boom, boom, kind of like that. But you know, there's pros and cons and it depends on your taste, of course. But you know what? I have a theory because I have been using mostly ambassadors on my snares, either ambassadors or um, a single ply head with one of those reinforcement thingies here because they just last a little longer. And why? Because I think that makes you more flexible, more versatile. You can keep it wide open and have the ring I personally really like when, when snares have a certain ring and a certain character, or you can just use moon jail or other dampening tools to make it sound closer to what we just heard, to a double ply head that is dampened a lot more. So let's try that now. I have the theory that I can make the ambassador more or less sound like the hydraulic. So let's add some moon jail until it sounds close to the hydraulic. This is the ambassador with moon jail dampening. Let's go. And you see, that is pretty close, right? It sounds a lot more controlled. So if you didn't like the ring of the initial Ambassador version, uh, you should like this now. And it sounds, I think it sounds a little more open, maybe not as punchy, but a little more open than the hydraulic version. So let's do some AB comparisons now. And that is, that is interesting. So they are, I would say like equally controlled and short now, more or less, but the frequency response is still different. Let's have another listen to just the snare microphone. This sounds a little artificial, but you will exactly hear what I mean. Have another listen.
So what we can hear is that the Ambassador, even with the Moon Jail, has a lot more higher frequencies, has a lot more attack you know, in the upper frequencies compared to the double ply head. The double ply head is just slower. It has more low end, more punch, oomph, and less highs. So that is a difference that you can take away with additional dampening. I think it's just the mass of the head itself. So my theory was right. You know, you can get the Ambassador pretty close to a double ply dampened head and then you can take away the Moon Jail and have a completely different sound, which makes it very versatile, especially in the studio. But it will still have a different frequency response compared with a double ply head. Now, the question is, what's better? Well, that depends on your taste. Um, so if you are a drummer who just need one sound and just wants the ultimate punch and doesn't really care about like crispy highs and stuff like that, just wants to boom, you should use something like this. Um, if you want to stay a little more flexible, I would just go for an ambassador or something less thick because, you know, you can, you can change your sound. But one more thing. So how do we mix snare drums these days? So let's have a look at a typical EQ curve for a snare drum microphone. Looks like this. I am hardly adding any bass to a snare drum microphone when I'm mixing. Only if the snare is tuned way too high maybe. But what I'm doing all the time and what everybody's doing all the time is we are adding highs. We need the snare, you know, to, to sound in your face, to hit us really hard. So if you are used to a modern snare sound on pretty much any production, there are always some added highs, especially because closed mics so always sound a little, a little dull. So that means if we are adding highs anyway in our mix later, but we're not adding lows, you know, what do we want from our, from our raw track? We want it to sound as bright as possible. So that's why I mostly use ambassadors because I need the, the higher crispy frequencies of that head and I don't really need the punch of the other ones because there's usually enough punch there, but I want the highs, you know? And we all know that if we crank the highs on a snare drum, we will also raise the level of the cymbals and we will have more cymbal bleed which is a bad thing. That means the brighter your snare track sounds, the better it is because the closer it is to the final sound you will have on your production. Then again, I'm not a drummer, so I just care about the sound. I don't have to play the drum. So I know there are other parameters that matter if you are a drummer, how, the, how, the, how it feels and shit like that. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry. So I just care about the sound and one thing I also care about is how long those heads actually last. So um, I'm sometimes buying like a single um, ply head from Evans that has one of those, I think they're called power dots attached because they just last a little longer. That saves me some money. Uh, and that's what I typically buy. So I will, um, I will put a link beneath and uh, show you what I'm using. All right, boys and girls, as I've told you, I'm already working on a affordable drum mic video. That will be my next video where you can win a pair of SE Electronics ribbon microphones. So you better subscribe to this channel now and ring the bell if you haven't already. Um, what else? I'm also working on some guitar videos and hopefully in a few days, I will do another beer with cola video where I announce the people who have won the Cola Keller t-shirts. Do we have them here? No. The Cola Keller t-shirt, so stay tuned. Anyway, uh, however, whatever, uh, if you want to win something, you should also subscribe to my email list. You'll find a link below to my email list. Um, yeah, you, you should subscribe there too and sell your soul to the devil. Uh, I've said that many times, it's worth it. It's worth it, you know, for free IRs or shirts or stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, you can sell your soul, right? I've also got a few products to sell. I've got two IR packs. I've got some drum samples. I've got a guitar course. There's a lot of stuff down there. So if you are uh, bored and very rich, you can have a look uh, at the video description. Um, um, yeah, so you can get rid of your money there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I hope we could make the bing bing sound great again. 
That's one of the few really smart things that Donald Trump have, has said. <laughs> ding, ding, bong, bong, bing, bing. Um, anyway, that's all for today. I love you guys. See you in hell, motherfuckers. Bye-bye.